Hello, everyone, and welcome. Laura here. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to be a part of the Pretty Pink Posh ninth birthday blog hop. They're celebrating nine years. Can you believe it? And I have a fun card to share with you featuring some new products that just came out in the February release, starting with the Birthday Balloons stamp set. I'm taking the solid balloon out of that birthday balloon stamp set. I'm going to stamp it with carnation ink, a beautiful pink. I'm going to be using all positively saturated inks, which are by Simon's stamp. They stamp like butter. And then I take peony, which is a darker pink, and I just stamp it along the bottom of the balloon. I take a blender brush and kind of dab it out to get a smooth transition so you have a beautiful, smooth, gradient pink balloon. And you could stop right there because it looks dynamite. But in the birthday balloon stamp set, there are some patterned balloons. So not only is it beautiful and gradient, it's going to be polka dot. I'm going to stamp a bouquet of balloons and they're all going to be gradient and patterned. And can I just say right here that not all balloon stamp sets are created equal. This one here, I got to say, stands out. It's up there, up in the top of balloon stamp sets. And I've done my fair share of balloon stamping. I'll have you know, but this is a good one. You know, it's just a good size balloon. Great pattern choices. It's going to be a staple. So I'm going to move on to balloon number two. We're going to do an orange one. Pulling out melon for that solid. And uh, this is a very, very light orange. Very subtle. And it kind of overlaps with that pink balloon. That's really where the magic is, is in the overlap. Okay, to make that orange a little bit gradient, I added sherbet, which is a darker orange. Dab it out with that blender brush. And then you have a beautiful gradient orange balloon. For the pattern, I pulled out a striped balloon. Okay, so you can easily, this is great when you're using the Misty because you can know you're going to get it lined up. And if the ink isn't dark enough, you can stamp it a few times, get perfect placement. Uh, okay, so I stamped it a couple times with melon. It just wasn't popping. So I add a little bit of that sherbet to the bottom, take the blender brush, dab it out. Back in the day, this kind of gradient stamping it used to be called a rock and roll technique because you would rock the ink pad along the base to make a gradient stamped image. But it's not really rock and roll anymore. It's more like a dab it. I dab it with the Misty. I don't even know. I got to come up with a better name. But the blender brush really does help to get a beautiful, smooth, gradient balloon. Okay, for the yellow one, I did star pattern. So I'm going to ink that up with citrine ink. And I'll have all the ink colors and all the supplies listed in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Because I probably am not going to mention every single color. But now we're doing kind of a, a corally red balloon with cheeky. And then for the gradient darkness, we add a little blush along the bottom. Take your blender brush and dab it out. Dab it like, like nobody's biz. Okay, so there you got your gradient. Now for the pattern one, uh, here's another pattern. I don't know what you call this, but it's kind of like like champagne bubbles bubbling up from the bottom of the balloon. Okay, now over on the right side, we are going to do a green. Now this is called celery ink, or my, as my husband would call it, salary. And, and it drives me bonkers. He always calls celery, salary. And sometimes I wonder if he does it on purpose. You know what I mean? Because I look at him, I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? And he's like, what are you, the, what are you, the celery police? In our house, only the strong survive, really. If you don't have sarcasm, you can't keep up. You got to you gotta know when to roll them and know, know when to hold them and know when to roll them, as Kenny Rogers would say. Okay, doing that champagne bubble pattern on the green one with perfection. That was the dark shade of green. One last balloon, uh, a sea foam. Now, I was having so much fun doing this, and I think it looks so gorgeous. I was tempted to fill the whole entire panel with balloons. Just fill the whole entire panel, just stamp my heart right out. But I felt like sometimes you gotta rein it in, leave a little white space. It gives a good composition. You know, too much of a good thing ain't always a good thing, you know what I'm saying? Okay, now for the gradient with the seafoam, I use Surf. Gonna make this last and final pattern balloon a stripe one. So I use a combination of the seafoam and the Surf and then now for a stem. There's a few different stems or strings 
in the stamp set. I'm going to be using flannel ink. For this one, I pulled out an acrylic block. I found it was easier because this tiny little balloon string can be hard to uh, place on the misty. It just it was easier with the acrylic block. So I stamped some subtle gray balloon strings. Now for a sentiment, I used the gift card bag die. And in that die set, there is a celebrate word die, which I'm gonna die cut out of some matte gold cardstock. I also ended up doing three more out of white so we can stack it up. Now, a lot of times when I stack up word dies, I use my liquid glue, my barely arts or what have you, but Today I'm pulling out the old micro dot adhesive sheets uh, by Simon Says Stamp. Been using these lately and I gotta tell you, they're the cat's meow. I mean, you put that in there, you give it a rub-a-dub and it covers your die cut with kind of like adhesive. It doesn't get all over. It just gets where you need it to go. It stays dry, it's not wet. There's no glue oozing out the sides. Uh, it, made, it made stacking up this die cut a pleasure, a pleasure and a delight. Okay, so there you got three stacked up with white. I'm going to finish it off, put a little adhesive on that last one, and then top it off with the matte gold. Okay, now here's the debate. This is what I went round and round about today. Where to place the sentiment. If you guys only knew how much time I futz and fuddle. Fits, futz and fits... <laughs> futs and throw fits and fuddle and fits oh boy about where to place a sentiment I feel like it needs to go right in the center but also I don't want to cover up that pink polka dot balloon it kind of breaks my heart a little bit but I just really don't see how it could go anywhere but right in the center I really don't uh, you got to tie in that sentiment with your composition to make it just fit right I finish it off with a few pretty pink posh sparkling clear sequins which can i just stop and say since we're celebrating nine years the sparkling clear sequins by pretty pink posh have hands down been my number one embellishment of all time make sure and check out the rest of the celebration blog hop thank you so much for joining me have a wonderful day and i will see you next time